This video will discuss how to find surface area of solid figures. First, let's review what polyhedra and other solids are. So a polyhedron is a solid who has sides that are made up of polygons, and we call these sides faces. When I talk about a face, I mean a side of one of these polyhedra. An edge of a polyhedron is the intersection of two faces. So here's an example of an edge. It's just where the two faces meet up. And a vertex is a point, and that's where the edges all meet into one spot. So here's like three edges meeting up into points. So that's what we mean by vertex or vertices if we're talking about more than one. So in this example, how many faces do we have? Well, there's four around the side. We call that the lateral piece of this figure. And there's one on the top and one on the bottom. So we have six faces here. How many edges are there? Well, let's see, there's one, two, three, four around the side, one, two, three, four on top, and one, two, three, four on the bottom. So we have 12 of those. And then how many vertices? I see one, two, three, four up top, and one, two, three, four on the bottom. So there's eight of them. So some examples of different polyhedra. We have this idea of prisms, and prisms are when you start with two congruent polygons. Picture them being one against the other, and then if we kind of pull them apart, we have something sticky, say, can attach to each vertex. So if I start with, say, maybe these two rectangles together, and then I pull them apart, that's where we maybe can see the prism. And with rectangles, it's a little confusing because you can think of pulling it apart this way or maybe pulling apart top to bottom. Generally speaking, though, when they're not rectangles, you look for the things that aren't rectangles and those are the base. So this example over here is a pentagonal prism because the bases are made up of pentagons. So I have two congruent pentagons. If you can picture them being pulled apart, the faces on the side, those are going to be rectangles. When you don't have a rectangular prism, it's the things that aren't rectangles that are bases. And when you do have rectangle prisms, well, you choose which ones are the bases. We also have this idea of a pyramid. So a pyramid is you still have a polygon for a base, but there's only one of them. Prisms, there's two bases. And with pyramids, there's one base. And then they all meet up at a point. From that point, we go to each vertex on the base, and that's kind of forming that pyramid. Each of the lateral sides are going to be triangles, so that's another difference. So the lateral sides in the prism, those are rectangles, and the lateral sides of a pyramid are triangles. Now we have these other solids we're going to be looking at, and they're not polyhedra because by definition, polyhedra have polygons for sides. But these sorts of figures here that we're looking at, these solids behave kind of in a similar way as these polyhedra. A cylinder, it's kind of like having a round prism, a circular prism, sort of. And a cone, it's kind of like a round pyramid. So you still have that circle base and it's meeting at a point. And the sphere is just a sphere. So that's, it's like a basketball. Uh, and we will talk about the sphere, not in this video, but in a later one. In this one, we'll do the prisms, the pyramids, the cylinders, and the cones, finding surface area and lateral area of these figures. Surface area, it's easier to understand them if you understand what a net is. So I have this website that talks about or shows what nets are. And basically, you have a polyhedron that you unfold. So what I have here is an animation of a triangular prism. And so it's gonna close itself up here. You can also imagine opening it up and now it's just like a flat surface. And you can see that it's made up of those three rectangles for the sides and then the two triangles for the bases. So kind of understanding that the polyhedron is made up of a bunch of faces and we can find the area of each one of those faces that will give us the surface area. So surface area is the sum of the area of all the faces. And lateral area is just the sides. So if I add up the areas of just the sides, so in this figure, it's the blue rectangles in this case, because I have a prism, but it's those sides. So you find the area of each of these sides and you add them up and that would give you the lateral area. Now, if you want to include the top and the bottom, the bases, I like to think of them as the lids, then you get the full surface area. So those are terms we have to understand. Lateral area versus the entire surface area. Lateral area does not include the top and bottom bases as part of the surface area. Kind of think of, um, you have a soup can, we're just talking about the label when we talk about lateral area. The surface area of prisms. 
We have two different kinds of prisms to think about. There are right prisms, and right prisms are nice right angles everywhere, so everything is straight up and down. Now, when you have an oblique prism, you don't necessarily have um, right angles in each of these quadrilateral sides. For the purposes of surface area, we are going to always be using the right prism, so we don't have to worry about this case for now. When we get to volume, we'll, we'll look more about how oblique prisms fit in. We've got some formulas and uh, we will look at that formula sheet. The way it works, generally speaking, for any prism, the surface area is, you take the lateral area, so you add up the area of the sides, and then you add in the bases, the area of each base. So uppercase B, the case here matters. When you see an uppercase B in these formulas, it's talking about area of the base and not just uh, some little dimension of the base. It's the whole entire area. And because there is a top and a bottom, there's two of them, and that's why we have two. It turns out the lateral area for any prism will be this cryptic thing, HP. H is the height of the prism, and that is the distance between the two bases. If I'm using the top and bottom here as my bases, how far apart are they? That would be the height of the prism. The P stands for perimeter of the base. So we need to know something about these side lengths and perimeter is just the sum of all those sides. There are reasons why it's HP plus 2B. So hopefully we can see where the 2B is coming from. So B stands for area of the base. So you find the area of the triangles here and there's two of them. So that's the two, that's the 2B. But where's the HP coming from? So I have a net here of a triangular prism. So I unfolded it. That's the 2B. But what about the lateral area? And the lateral area is this piece here. So if we think about uh, the area of this, so it's a rectangle altogether. It's all three rectangles together. And so this is H. That's how high it is, the distance between the bases. And what's this? So what are the A, Bs, and Cs representing? So A is the length of this face, and B is the length of that face right there, or width, I should say, and C is the width of that one. Now picture this folded back up, and it can be a little hard to kind of picture that. But when I were to fold this back up, this side here would fit right against that side. So if this is A long, so is that. And this, this length C here, that side would fold up right against that. So this would be C. The formula is really H times A plus B plus C. But A plus B plus C is actually the perimeter of that base. So that's where that's coming from. If you're not quite seeing it yet, don't worry about it. SA, the surface area of any prism, equals HP, height of the prism, the distance between the bases, times the perimeter of the base, plus two times the area of the base. That's what we need to remember. Now I do wanna bring up our formula sheet that we're using in the state of Virginia. So here is our formula sheet. And basically what you do is you find the figure that you're interested in, and then you use the formula sheet, right? So what they do, and on the formula sheet is they separate out rectangular prisms from any other prism. They say, use this formula. And basically what that does is it says, okay, so you have two of these. So there's your width times height. You have two of these. There's your length times your height. And you have two of these. And that's your length times width. I think this one makes sense. And a lot of people use it because they can sort of understand what they're doing. Unfortunately, we tend to make a lot of errors with this formula. Even though it might be easier to understand, we tend to mess it up. And I include myself in that. We tend to mess that up. So I always say, don't use this one. So I'm gonna unemphasize that and say, don't use this. Use this. And this works for any prism, including rectangular. And there's our HP plus 2B. That way there's only one thing you have to remember. If you have a copy of the formula sheet, go ahead and make that note because we do see a lot of mistakes with the other ones. So let's do some examples. Uh, let me preface this by saying, I think the prism surface area is the most difficult one we do. Now the example, and this main example is the one in the notes. I put a simpler one in here because I think this one's a little bit hard as a first try. We always write down the formula. So the surface area of a prism is HP plus 2B, and that's uppercase B, and the uppercase matters, because that means area of the base. 
So we need to find H, which is the height of the prism, P, the perimeter of the base, and the area of the base. Those are the things we need to find. When you have a rectangular prism, you choose where the bases are. I'm gonna choose this one over here, and there's one behind it, this, this little rectangular shape there. Could you choose a different one for the base? You can, but you just need to be consistent. If these are the two bases, then height, which is the distance between the base, is that, the 10. If you chose different bases, you'd have a different height. It all works out to be the same, but just do the one that you see, and these are the ones I, I saw. H, the distance between the two bases I chose is 10. Perimeter of the base, well, that's this is my base. I have two of those length fours and two of those length sixes, so that is, I believe, 20, right? And then uppercase B. So that's area of the base because these are rectangles, it's length times width, which is 24. And then we put it all together. Surface area is HP, so 10 times 20 plus two times 24 which I believe comes out to be 248. And we didn't have units here, so I'm gonna say units squared. I wanna just take a moment here to show you how the Desmos calculator can help us do this, make this a lot simpler. So I've got the Virginia graphing calculator. The same will be true for any version of the Desmos graphing calculator that I'm aware of. Anyway, at least the normal one. You type in the formula. Well, I'm just used S to mean surface area equals HP plus two and an uppercase B, right? That is our formula. And there is a little hard to see, but there's this all button, HP and B make, you press that all button and it allows you a chance to just type it in. So for the example we just did, the H was 10. So for perimeter, we did a calculation by hand, but you can also type that in here. So I believe it was two, it was, the perimeter was two times six, plus two times four. So you can just even do that here without doing the, whoops, without doing the actual calculation ahead of time, let the calculator do it. It'll figure out that it's 20. And then the base was six times four, length times width. And then we go back up to the top, it just puts that all together for us. So it does all the calculating. You wanna reduce your chances of making calculation errors. So let's go back and try this example, which is a little bit harder just because the numbers are a little bit harder. Now in this case, I have a triangular prism. So I'm still gonna write out my formula. So the surface area is HP plus two uppercase B. And because it's triangular, it's obvious what the bases are, the things that are triangles. So this is a base and this is a base. So I want H, the distance between the bases, well, that would be here, right? How far apart are those two triangles? They're 9.1 meters apart. Perimeter of the base. Well, let's see, I'm looking at one of the triangles. So this is three meters, that's eight meters, but I see this congruence. So that's eight as well. So it's eight plus eight plus three, which is 19. And then I need to figure out B. And this is where it can get a little hard. And with prisms, Depending on your base, sometimes those calculations can be tricky, but let me draw another picture of what I've got going here. Oops. So this is three and this is eight on both sides, right? Meters. So I need to find the height of this base. Now here's where it starts getting confusing. There's a height up here. This is the height of the prism. There's another H in the formula for area of a triangle because area of a triangle is one half base times height. So this height, this H is different from that H. So I'm gonna put a little triangle here and this B is different from the other B. So I've got an uppercase B here, that means area of the base, and I've got a lowercase B here where I'm referring to the base of the triangle, which is this value here. I need to find H of the triangle. And I drew this, it's a altitude, it's an altitude, that's a right angle. And if we just look at this triangle here, that's a right triangle. I can find H by using the Pythagorean theorem. It will be the square root of the hypotenuse, which is eight squared, minus the leg we know. Now this whole thing is three, 
altitudes will cut isosceles triangles in half. So if this whole thing is three, this piece here will be half of that, which is 1.5. So that's the leg we know squared. And we can work that out. I think it comes out to be 62.3 if I did this right. Um, or we can we can leave that for you know the calculator to do for us. But now I think I can figure out what B is. It's one half, and this base is three times this height, which I'm not going to figure out some estimate of it. I'm just going to leave it the way it is. So uppercase B is 1.5 times these 62.3. And that's, that's this. So when I put all this together, SA equals H P plus two times this number, two times 1.5 square root 62.3. So it's 9.1 times 19 plus three times the square root of 62.3. And at this point, I'm ready for my graphing calculator. So I'm starting with my uh, SA equals HP plus 2B. H, that was 9.1. And P was 8 plus 8 plus 3, which we could put in 19, or we can just let the calculator do this for us, just in case we made a mistake with that. We need to find the base. So again, using that little triangle we created, it was 1.5 times the square root of either 62.3, or I can actually just put in a calculation right here. and let it do all the work. So that just in case I didn't do that intermediate calculation correctly, it does everything all in kind of this one step. And then when I go back up, what is it? It's, this is the surface area. So to the nearest 10th, 196.6. And these are square meters. Surface area are areas, you're adding areas, so they're still square units. So I know this one was a little hard. I think this is the hardest one we're going to do. Uh, just be really careful. Use that Desmos calculator. It can really help keep things organized. Don't do any intermediate estimations along the way. Try to use that calculator in one go with no other estimations, and we should all get the same uh, result. Okay, so that being the hardest, let's look at some of these other ones. So the surface area of cylinders. So cylinders are basically curvy pyramids. So you have circle bases that you kind of stretch open and they make kind of a, a soup can kind of shape. So it, it is still really HP plus 2B. But if you think about, to uppercase B, you think about what these are. H is the height of the prism. So there's the H. And then the perimeter of the base, the base is a circle. So what do we call perimeter in the circle? We call it the circumference. And circumference is 2 pi r. So basically our hp is really h times 2 pi r. And the formula tends to write that as 2 pi r h. So that's the hp part. So that's what this is. That's like having your hp. So here's the h and that part's like the p. Then the 2 pi r squared, that's really 2b to uppercase B, because it's the area of the base and the area of a circle is pi r squared. So this is really no different than the formula for surface area of a prism. It's just that we can get it that much easier by using what we know about circle. The formula is, and I'm, I'm not even gonna use this stuff here, I have a picture of a net or whatever, but the, the area basically is surface area. So HP two pi r h, plus pi r squared. If you actually factor out what they have in common, whoops, I forgot the two here, um, two pi r h plus two pi r squared. So there's a two pi r in both those terms. So if I factor out that, I'm left with an h here, and I'm left with one r there. And this actually makes the calculation a little bit simpler. So that's what I tend to use. It is okay if, if you use this formula, either one is correct. This is what we have on our formula sheet, and this is what I tend to use. I have two examples here. This example is find the surface area of this cylinder. So surface area equals 2 pi r times h plus r. And again, this is the one I use. You can use 2 pi r h plus 2 pi r squared. So what are the pieces? I need r and I need h. r is the radius, which is 6. 
And h is the height, which is the distance between those two circle bases, which is 4.9. And then we just plug in. So let's see, 2 pi r, so r is 6, so that's 12 pi. And then we're just going to add these together times 10.9. And if we want an exact answer, we would just multiply the numbers and leave the pi on its own. If I did this part right, it comes out to be 130.8 130 pi. And that would be the exact surface area. If you start multiplying that pi out, you get 410.9. And that's an estimate to the nearest tenth uh, square centimeters for that. And you can use your calculator to do all that for you. Put in the formula, plug in those values. Now this one's a little bit different. This one is, I know the surface area, but I want to find the height, that distance between them. So what I would do, and what I recommend you do, is you start with the formula and then solve it for the thing you want. The thing I want is h. The first thing I'm going to do is divide both sides by 2 pi r. And what that gives me is I get an h plus an r equals the surface area over 2 pi r. Again, I'm still solving for h. So I'm going to subtract r from both sides. So h is the surface area over 2 pi r minus r. And these are two different terms. The r, I see people do this all the time. They write sa minus r and they put the whole thing over 2 pi r. That's not what this is. So you fig figure out this part and you subtract that. So if I make my substitutions here, so H will be SA, which I'm told is 168.09 over 2 pi R. R is 4, so that would be over 8 pi. And then I subtract uh, 4 because that's R. And that's what goes into my calculator. It's 168.09 divided by 8 pi, I believe it was, and I'm going to put that in parentheses. Okay, so that's SA over 2 pi r, and then I'm moving over here to put my minus here, uh, the 4, which is the radius. So to the nearest tenth, that's approximately 2.7. So this is approximately 2.7 meters. Let's look at the surface area of pyramids. So again, we have this idea of regular pyramids versus non-regular pyramids. Got a nice regular uh, polygon as its base, so all those sides will be congruent. So we have a new word here called slant height, which is also called lateral height. So this straight up and down is height. That is the height of the pyramid. If you were to stand at the tip and you were to drop a rock or a penny straight up and down, that's how high this pyramid is. A slant height is if you were to take a net of this thing, these triangle sides all have a height as well. And so the slant height or lateral height is the height of one of the triangles on the side. So it always looks like it's on a slant. So that's why we can call it a slant height. We have a formula for the lateral area, which would just be the triangles. That area add it all up. And then we add in uppercase B, which would just be the area of the base, length times width. We get this because this is uh, one half base times uh, that L or slant height, and you have four of those. And so that's where all this is coming from. So if you can look at this a little more closely if you're interested in that proof. But basically, the surface area of a pyramid is the lateral area, which is one half slant height times the pyramid of the base plus the area of the base. We only have one base, so there's no 2B here. So we'll look at an example, find the surface area of this prism, always write down the formula. It's one half uh, slant height times perimeter of the base plus area of the base. So looking at this picture, the L slant height is the six yards, that's this. And then perimeter of the base, this is a regular pyramid, which means all these sides will be congruent. It's a regular polygon on the base. So if you add up four, plus four, plus four, plus four, you get 16 yards. And then we also need to get the uppercase B, which in this case will turn out to be the same thing, right? So four times four, four squared is also 16. And then we can just put it all together. It's one half six times 16 plus 16. And you can use the calculator to do this. If you do, you'll get 64 uh, square yards. 
And then the surface area of cones, which are basically curvy pyramids. So again, a, a right cone here. So the vertex is right over the middle so that when you drop your altitude there to get the height of the pyramid, it's right in the center of that circle so that any segment that you put from that center out will be a radius length. You have the pi r squared, which is the uppercase B, right? That's the um, uppercase B, or the area of the base. And then the pi r L, which is how we find that lateral area. And we can look at, you know, why that is, but it has to do with areas, sectors, and things like that. So you can look at that at your own leisure if you want, but we're just going to continue just using the formula. If I want to find the lateral area and then the surface area. So remember, lateral areas are just the sides, right? The side without the top. Surface area includes the base, right? Whereas this one doesn't. It's just the sides. It's kind of like if this was a party hat. You know, how much cardboard do I need to make that party hat? So lateral area, this is where you really kind of need to understand what's going on here. Pi r squared, that's the base. The pi r l, that's the lateral area. And then we need to find all the pieces. So the r is nine. But here's where it's tricky. This 12 is not l. The 12 is the height. The l would be this length, which they did not give us. However, look really carefully. If you were to take a slice straight through this cone, can you see that right triangle that you would get where this side would be nine and this side would be 12? Because I know two sides of this right triangle, I can find that third side. I can use the Pythagorean theorem or I can notice this is kind of a three, four, five triangle in disguise. It's three times a three, four, five triangle. So this comes out to be 15. And if you don't see that triple, no worries. Just use the Pythagorean theorem. So my L is 15. So you got to be careful. You're getting the right thing. So this will be pi times 9 times 15, which if I want the exact lateral area, just multiply the 15 times the 9 and then carry the pi through. This is the exact lateral area. And if they want an estimate, then go ahead and multiply the pi. I think it comes out to be about 424. Uh, 0.1 square inches. So there's my lateral area. Now to find the surface area, I'm basically going to take that lateral area and I'm going to add in that bottom, the pi r squared. The r is 9. So I'm going to take my lateral area, but I'm using exact because I want this to be as precise as possible. And it's actually a little bit easier if you keep everything exact because the numbers are a little more normal. 135 pi, if I substitute 9 in here, that's an 81 pi. It's a lot easier adding 135 plus 81 than it is to start working with decimal estimates. So 135 plus 81, I believe that's 216 pi. And that would be uh, the exact surface area, or I could multiply the pi out to the nearest tenth, 600. 78.6, I believe, is what you should get there. And that would be the surface area. I think we've gone on long enough showing some examples of how to work with these formulas and a little bit about where they came from. So go ahead and try some new tries. If you're using one of my notes that I gave to my class, it's on the back. And these are A through D to give a try here. Pause the video and then come back and you'll see how you did. So go ahead, pause the video. Pause it. Hopefully you pause the video. If you didn't, here's another opportunity to do so. These are the four that have to do with surface area and lateral area. So if you didn't try them yet, go ahead and try. But if you did, let's go see if we got the same results. I'm going to pop up the answers here and let's see, how do we get there? So this first one, first thing you do is identify what this is. This is a triangular prism. So the surface area of a prism, any prism, uh, HP plus 2 uppercase B. Height of the prism times perimeter of the base plus twice the area of the base. Height of a prism is the distance between the bases. The bases are these triangles. How far apart are they? So the height here would be 8 inches. The perimeter of the base, well, let's see, that one's 6 and that one's 6. Didn't give me a value, but look across to the other side, which is the congruent triangle. That's 6. So the perimeter of the base is 18, and this is an equilateral triangle. So I've got H and P, now I need to find B, the area of the base, and I'm gonna draw that triangle. So I'm just looking at it now, right? It's six, six, and six. 
which means it's equilateral, which means all the angles are congruent and they're all gonna be 60. So when I drop my altitude here, a few things happen. Uh, this piece gets cut in half, so that side is three, which I'm having a little trouble seeing, so let me just redraw that. So this is three and this is three, right? Whole thing six. And this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle because that angle gets cut in half as well. So a 30, 60, 90, we don't even need trig to find the length of this because we can use the 30, 60, 90 rules, which are the shorter leg, which is opposite the 30 degree is three. Twice that is the hypotenuse, which it sure is, it's six. But the altitude here, the longer leg, this one, is the short leg times the square root of three. That's the height of my triangle. So the area of this triangle is one half, the small b, the base of that triangle, times the height of the triangle, which is one half, base is six, height is three times the square root of three, which makes this nine square root three. So then I can substitute all this in here, so H is eight, P is 18, and now I've got two of these, so 18 square root three, and we can use the calculator to make sure we've done this right. I'm just gonna type in my formula, HP plus two B, and I'm gonna press the all button. So our height came out to be eight, our P was 18, and our base was, let's see, I'm just gonna actually let it do all the work here. It was one half times the base of six times, and then I am getting 175.2 approximately. Square inches which is what we expected. That's probably the hardest one on here. Let's see if we can find the surface area of this cylinder. So a cylinder. So this is a case where we know the surface area and we wanna find the height. So if SA equals two pi r times h plus r, we're gonna solve this for h. And we did this earlier in the video. So h comes out to be surface area over two pi r minus r. So it's 198.8 over two times 2.8 times pi minus 2.8. Gonna put that in your calculator and you should get, so I just have this in the calculator all ready to go and I'm getting approximately 8.5, which is what we were expecting. This one, we want to find surface area of this pyramid. So surface area of a pyramid is one half slant height times perimeter of the base plus area of the base. So the slant height, they're just giving it to us, it's six. Uh, it doesn't say, but let's go with this being a regular pyramid. So you add up all those to get perimeter of the base, which is 16, and then area of the base is four squared, which is 16. And this looks an awful lot like the one we had um, in the examples, right? That we just did. So hopefully y'all got this one, right? So it's one half six times 16 plus 16, which is still 64 square yards. So hopefully y'all got that one. And then we want the lateral area of this guy. So lateral area means I don't want the whole surface area. So I'm not gonna include uh, the uppercase B there. So lateral area of a cone is pi r l. So lateral area pi radius times slant height, which is right here. R is seven and l is 15. So it's pi times seven times 15. Pi times seven times 15, which I believe is 105 pi which if you put that in your calculator is approximately 329.9 square inches. 
Hopefully you got these correct. If not, kind of go back and check the video out. I do appreciate you taking the time to watch this and try these U-tries. I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching.